Talk Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Iyala Van Zandt's in the house. George and I are already having a conversation, Iyala. How you doing? The author, Peace from Broken Pieces, her newest book, and uh, Tapping the Power Within. Yesterday I Cried in the Meantime. It goes on and on. How you doing, Miss Van Zandt? I'm blessed. How are you, my beloved? I don't know if you're ready for George today. <laughs> Hi, George. Hey, sweetheart. How are you? I'm good. You good. doing good? I'm wonderful. Thank good. you. Iyala, uh-huh. when we went marching, the vast majority of the people marching were women. Uh, when it's time to vote, you already hear about the war on women. Women are a majority of the voters. Women are head of household. Women are starting more businesses. Women are the ones supporting this show more than anyone else. Women are the ones on my social network. 85% of my Facebook fans are women. And I asked George this, and, and, and maybe you address this when you deal with women dealing with uh, the broken pieces. Where, where do men fit in? We're going to have a female president pretty soon. Where do we fit in as men? And when I said that, what did you say, George? I said in jail and on drugs. This is a reality that we have to look at, and particularly when we're looking at men of color, and I mean Latin American, African American, Caribbean American, and in some levels Native American men. There's a level of arrested development, Development. Mm -hmm. meaning that there are pieces and parts of them internally, uh, because I think brothers are doing some great things in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those things don't get publicized, they don't get advertised, they don't get shown. But there is an inordinate number of of brothers, African-American, Latin-American men, who are, you know, in prison, doing drugs, marginally employed, unemployed. Oh, I left out one, the graveyard. Uh, Yeah. Bad health. Yeah, and and so it, it, it has to do with arrested development. It has to do with the fact that the educational system is not set up to advance and promote the needs of males of color. No. And there are many, you know, and it's, it's set up, it's not the society in which we live is not set up to give men of color a, a prominent place in the society. Even though we have an African-American president in the White House, he's the first president I know who's been called a liar to his face. Out, uh, in public. He's the first president who's, you know, challenged on his religious standing, his citizenship. Time and time again. His, so. All of that. And, and we're looking at this and we're saying, mm, that's terrible, but we're not looking at how it impacts and how it is a representation of mm. how men of color are in this society. I tell you what I wanted to ask you, because you, I, I see you as a pretty contemporary woman, even though you're old school, you know, you have, you live in both worlds. And I told George and Juan, I respect their relationship. They're two married men where their wives are equal partners in their relationship. And the roles are changing now. Can men handle this transition of women being equal partners now and have been? Well, you know, it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's when we say equal partners, a lot of it, unfortunately, Michael and George falls on the woman. Mm-hmm. It falls on how she was raised to see, to hold, to be with males. It, it falls on her shoulders. You know, I found something recently that just turned my world on its ear. And it was a statement by Ralph Waldo Emerson that hmm. says, a man is what his mother raises him to be. How about that? I didn't like it. But when I looked at my son, I said, hmm. oh, my God, he is what I raised him to be. I think it falls on the men. Because the women are going to continue to prosper. They're going to continue to get educated. They're going to continue to get uh, jobs. And it's the man who has to figure out if he can handle this equality that's happened now. It's not easy, yeah. But if he hasn't had a model of how a man is to be, Mm -hmm. then he doesn't have the tools or the equipment to figure that out with. Yeah, well, I got that from my mom. My dad wasn't there. So yeah, but right. your mom gave it to you, and yeah, she she, did. you are who she raised you to be. Absolutely. You get it from your mama, George. Yep, you get I did it get from that her. From her. Yeah. And, and when I look at how I raised my son to be, I'm just speaking about me, not that I was a bad mother, not that I did the wrong thing. George, I didn't have the information that he needed until long after he needed it. Sure. And so he had arrested development. I'm just putting it out there. Mm-hmm. And then, even as he was older, he was no longer a child under my roof, I had to keep feeding him information, feeding him information. I think sometimes mothers don't understand the impact that they have on their children, and particularly their sons, as long as they are alive. 
And for here are the three errors that mothers make sometimes with their son. And, you know, I don't want people to get mad at me, but here's one. Number one, we keep our sons emotionally crippled mm. by telling them what they, who they're not and what they cannot do. That's number one. Don't do that. You can't do this. Again, for me, it goes back to cellular memory. We have a cellular memory of men of color being hung and killed because they're too advanced. Mm. You know, a black man who stands up, who tells the truth, who who stands in his power, who Mm -hmm. challenges the authority. Authority. Mm -hmm. He could be hung. (laughs) Absolutely. <laughs> we have that memory still alive in our body. So that's what we do. We keep them emotionally limited and, and sometimes intellectually limited. The other thing that we have a tendency to do as mothers is we make our sons our emotional husbands. And we beat them up for what their fathers didn't do, who their fathers weren't, what their fathers didn't give. We constantly remind them of that. And then we put expectations, requirements, and demands on them to make us happy Wow! as their mothers. I'm just saying. And what's the other thing? And the other thing that we do is we have very low expectations of them. We say what they cannot do, and then we go do it for them as opposed to letting them do it, try and fail. That's the experience that will give them the success. But we have very low expectations. Oh, you know, he can't do that. Let me do that. Oh, he can't get a job. Let me pay his rent. Mm-hmm. Oh, he can't do this. Let me his girlfriend live with me. Oh, he's got three kids. Let me watch them. You know, come on. Iyana, as always, you put it down. Once again, the book, Peace from Broken Pieces. I'm going to ask you to do this for me. I'm going to read this uh, Maya Angelou quote to you, and I want to get your thoughts on it. Uh, It says, someone was hurt before you, wrong before you, hungry before you, frightened before you, beaten before you, humiliated before you, raped before you, yet someone survived. You can do anything you choose to do. What did that Maya Angelou quote mean to you? It says everything to me, that sometimes we get into a place of self-pity, and self-degradation, thinking that we're the only one. And we hypnotize ourselves by telling the limited story over and over and over, as opposed to looking at the possibilities that exist as a result of what we learn from our experience. So we'll keep saying, my daddy wasn't there, my daddy wasn't there, my dad, I didn't have this, I couldn't do that. Well, somebody else did it. Their mm-hmm. daddy wasn't there. They got beaten. They got left. They got abandoned. Right. They got abused. It. They and, got raped. Yeah. And they were able to make it. Wow. So we look at the limitation as opposed to the success. Thank you for that, Iyanla. I appreciate that so much. Hey, what do you got going on? Oh, everything. Oh, I got so much stuff going on. Let people come to my website, InnovisionsWorldwide.com, and stay tuned because my show is premiering on OWN in June. Oh, we'll be blowing that up. We'll be blowing that all the way up. You got to let me know that in advance because I want to lead up to that bad boy. I want to have a week like... Yala Van Zandt quotes on the show and let them know what's coming on. I'm going to blow and that it's up. It's going to be delicious. It's about a family breakdown, something that's very common Nary. in our community where the grandmother raises the child and fractures the relationship between the mother and the child. Good. It is classic in our community, but we need to know how to heal it. Well, we're going to talk about that. We're going to have you on that Monday and then replay you all week leading up to the premiere of the show the following week. I want everybody ready. That will be delicious. Thank you so much, Yala. Thank, Thank you. you. Love you. Love you, too.